We have to stop this. All of this. We have to stop writing, reading, telling, and spreading these things around. As I sit here in my one-bedroom apartment, I can feel him looking at me. He's closer now. I can see him pacing in the corner. And when he sees what I'm writing here, I'm not sure what'll happen. I've been writing these things for the last year. I polluted the world with this filth for a year now and I'm done. I'm freaking done. It wasn't always like this. I was married to an amazing woman, once upon a time. We had a little boy, a new house, and I had a job that paid very well. We had friends, and we went out and we had a life, until I found the creepypastas. I used to like creepypastas. I've always been a fan of horror films, horror comics, and pretty much anything scary. I remember when I was six, I watched The Shining with my mom. And while I didn't sleep at all that night, I was also hungry for more from that day on. Even cheesy films like Paranormal Activity or The Haunting of Sunshine Girl seemed to pique my adrenaline, and the darker the movie, the more it appealed to me. I guess that's why I liked them so much. If I was afraid, then my adrenaline was pumping, and it made me feel more alert, more alive. Horror movies are how I met my wife, Lisa. We were both standing in line at a midnight showing of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and we began talking about horror movies as we waited to get our tickets. By the time we got inside, our friends had called to cancel at the last minute and I invited her to sit with me. She was cute, but turned out to be a bit of a scaredy cat, hiding her eyes and squeezing my hand during the best parts. I didn't care though. I think I was in love by the end of that movie. And six months after that, I asked her to move in with me. Six months afterwards, I proposed and we made it official. My condo, our condo, was fine for a little while, but when she told me I was pregnant, I knew it was time to find a bigger place. I do IT work for a pretty big company, so money for a house wasn't too big of an issue. So between our jobs, we were able to get a pretty nice three-bedroom house in the city, and I put my condo up for rent. When our son was born later that year, I thought it was the happiest day of my life. Little did I know it would be one of the last happy things in my life. About two and a half years ago, just as my son turned two, a friend of mine told me about a new game on Steam called Five Nights at Freddy's. He knew I liked horror games, so he bought me a copy, saying it was a late birthday present. I played the game, and even though it was kind of cheesy, I felt like it was still an okay experience. The game, however, opened up a door I wish I'd left closed. I was struck by the mystery of the game. The bite of 85, the animatronics, the missing children. So I went searching online for more info. That's how I stumbled across the creepypastas. They were great. How had I never seen these before? They were terrifying in a way I hadn't been terrified in years. I started with the classic, 1999, which was recommended because of the main character from the FNAF games. From the first time I heard it, it felt like there was something about it, something different. It prickled the hair on the back of my neck to be sure, but it also felt like something was watching me. I shrugged it off as a scared feeling, like when you watch a really intense horror movie and for a day or so afterward you feel on edge, and I spent the next few months engrossed in any creepy pauses I could find. Jeff the Killer, Slenderman Legends, Smile Dog, Candle Cove. The Blue Man, and all the SCPs. And after a while, they became sort of a mania in me. When I learned that there were several channels on YouTube that read them aloud, I instantly subscribed. I would eat through months or years of archives in one setting, and with my headphones on, I felt immersed into a world of darkness that no horror movie could simulate. The Creepypasta created a movie in my mind that no Nightmare on Elm Street or House of a Thousand Corpses could rival and it seemed like if I had time I was always listening to them, ignoring everything else. That's when things started to get bad. It started with insomnia. I was plagued with nightmares and I'd wake up several times a night. When I'd wake up I'd be certain there was something in the bedroom with me, a presence or a person. But a frantic sweep would find nothing except a grumpy wife at being woken up yet again by my nightmare. It got to the point where I was lucky to get five hours of sleep a night, then four hours of sleep, then two if I was really lucky, and then two, but only if I took sleep aids or drank myself into oblivion. My wife made me go see a doctor, 
who put me on medication, but that didn't work either. Then at her wit's end, she made me sleep on the couch, but that only escalated my night terrors. That feeling of being watched got worse and worse, and I started seeing something out of the corner of my eye when I listened to my creepy pastas. It would creep closer and closer every day, but when I'd look, it would just vanish. I started having trouble at work. I was always tired and short with my co-workers, and one day the boss told me not to bother coming back. My wife was furious, and finally told me that it was my family or the scary stories, so I gave them up, for a little while at least. I lasted all of two weeks, cold turkey, but then I started listening to them again, just a little bit, but before I knew it, I was listening to them all the time. And so my wife took our son and left for our mother's house. My nightmares got worse, and suddenly I wasn't sleeping at all. My temper would flare up unexpectedly, and my friends stopped coming around. My wife filed for divorce, unable to help me, and unwilling to watch me kill myself with these stupid stories. My parents stopped calling, agreeing with my wife that if I couldn't stop on my own, then they wanted nothing to do with me. Then one day, I realized that the stories were all I had left, or so I thought. One day, about a year ago, the stories weren't enough. I could see the thing in the corner of my eye more and more, stalking me. So I started writing them. Writing them seemed to keep him at bay, seemed to get the darkness out of me, and for a while things got better. I was getting five hours of sleep again. I was feeling better than I had in a long time but the writing became just as big of a mania as reading them. The divorce proceedings went badly for me. She got the house, of course, and child support, and a lot of other things I would have fought for at one time. I didn't care, though. None of this mattered to me. All I cared about was the thing in the corner of the courtroom that kept growling and pacing. All I wanted to do was get this over with so I could get home, get home to my writing. I moved out, went back to the condo we used to live in, and took odd jobs online to keep the light and internet on. I've sold blood, sperm, written terrible things for terrible people, and all to feed this addiction that I've developed. I'm no better than any smack addict, no better than some worthless junkie who writes up his fix every day. My wife keeps calling me, asking when I plan to see our son who keeps asking where his daddy is, but I don't have time for that. I have to write. I have to keep this beast away, but even that's not doing it anymore. That thing in the corner of my eye, I can see him now. He's not even trying to hide, and I'm afraid that he's very close to having me. God forgive me, but he's stalking forward right now. I can see his paws or feet or whatever they are as they make little divots in the carpet. I can smell his rancid breath as he grins, with his lipless mouth full of teeth. So what's the point of this then? Why write a creepypasta about creepypastas? For some kind of macabre immortality within the world I once loved? To have one last hurrah before the end? No. I'm writing it for you who may be reading this. Always remember, if you remember nothing else, that these tales are spun from darkness. That's the thing you feel watching you when you create fear. It's real. It can and will get you if you let it. And while you stare long into the abyss, know that it stares hungrily back at you. His face is inches from my throat now, and I can finally identify the brimstone in his every breath. I think my time might be up.